Welcome back people to the channel and today we have another tactic. We will be looking at a 4-2-3-1 based off Jurgen Klopp's time at Borussia Dortmund. So in the video, we will be doing a brief analysis, playing a game, creating a tactic, but also looking at the results. So if you are enjoying my type of content, make sure you are subscribed, make sure you like the video, leave a comment, share the video, all of that good stuff. But also before we get stuck into the video, I'd like to give a massive shout out to Zealand. He helped me, he helped this channel, he put me on his channel where we did a collab we've done five things to avoid when making tactics make sure you go and check out the video i will leave a link in the description below but now let's get stuck into the analysis From a tactical perspective, Klopp's Dortmund highly focused on the transitional moments. In order to execute their typical counter-pressing, Dortmund attacked with a rather narrow shape. Dortmund would often build up their play through one side of the pitch. Their goal was to break down on this side of the pitch or to regain possession after losing the ball with their compact shape. The overall goal of Gegen Pressen was to quickly counter-attack after a successful execution. Therefore, Klopp even once stated that Gegen Pressen is the best playmaker. And Dortmund, indeed, often created chances after counter-pressing situations. Looking at his Dortmund side, one can often see them setting up in a mid-block, setting up in a compact 4-4-1-1 shape. The two forward players were especially supposed to use their cover shadows to prevent passes into midfield. Dortmund prevented the opposition from playing any penetrative passes and started their press with certain triggers. A bad pass, miscontrol of the ball or a close body shape of a receiving player meant that Dortmund's players started to press the ball carrier and shut down all passing options. One of Dortmund's defensive strengths was how the wingers trap back once being overplayed. Therewith, they can often outnumber the ball carrier near the sideline and stop the opposition attack. Lewandowski at Dortmund utilised as a hold-up striker. The Polish international always offered the deepest passing option and was often found with longer balls. Either Lewandowski could hold up the ball and wait for his teammates to progress up the pitch or he could threaten the space behind the opposition's defence himself. Since Dortmund's attacking approach was rather direct, Lewandowski's abilities were advantages to their style of play. Moreover, he would often be the main threat of their crosses from wider areas resulting from their dangerous wing play. During his Dortmund time, Klopp favoured a 4-2-3-1 with a double pivot and a playmaker in midfield. One of the double pivots could join the attack in higher areas while the other would often provide cover in front of the back line. The ball near fullback supported their attack while the other stayed at the back only progressing up the pitch when Dortmund were able to stretch the play. So that there wraps up the brief analysis of Jurgen Klopp's time at Borussia Dortmund, the 4-2-3-1 that we're looking to create. So a big shout out to Max Bergman and Total Football Analysis for the tactical analysis. But for now, let's build a tactic, play a game, and then lastly, look at the results. So welcome back to Football Manager. As you can see, we have lined up with a 4-2-3-1. Of course, the instructions, the player roles aren't set yet. We are going to build this tactic from scratch. But there's also going to be two tactics. They're going to be identical. Well, they're nearly going to be identical, but one is more focused on counter-attacks, which you would use against the likes of Bayern Munich or Liverpool, Man United. Depends which league you are managing in. The sides that are kind of on the same level or bigger than you, especially in those away games. But Let's get stuck into the tactic, let's create it and then play a game. And the first thing we can look at is the mentality. We will be using the attacking mentality, get players further forward, especially after winning the ball. This is going to help us in our transition, be the more dominant side in the transitional phases. When you are playing against the bigger sides or like the counter-attacking tactic that I was talking about, we will be using the cautious mentality. So by default, we will be using the attacking mentality, but when we're playing against the bigger sides or using the counter-attacking tactic, we will be using the cautious mentality. So now, in possession, we will be playing out from the defence, we will also be focusing down both flanks, so we can dominate and create our chances down the flanks, similar to how Borussia Dortmund did it under Jurgen Klopp. We will be passing into the space as this will help us with our counter-attacks. The tempo will be slightly higher. We're just going to be moving the ball from defence to attack at a higher tempo. We're going to be running at the defence as well as working the ball into the box. So 
in possession, this is what we're going to be looking like. Focusing down both flanks, play out from the defence, a higher tempo, pass into the space, run out the defence and work the ball into the box. We're just working the ball into the box just to minimise the long shots and the amount of crosses that is going into the box. We don't want to cross for crossing sake, we will wait for the perfect moments to cross the ball, which most of the time is when the player is approaching the byline. In transition, we will be using the counter press, we will be making counter movements when the ball has been won and for the goalkeeper's distribution, he will be taking, well, not taking short kicks, he will be throwing it long. And now for out of possession and in the analysis, I did mention that Dortmund did use kind of a mid block, but we're going to be using a highish mid block. So, so we will be using a higher line of engagement, a higher defensive line. The defensive width is set to force the opposition on the outside. Again, this can be our pressing trigger, but also this will give us a compact defensive shape. The trigger press is going to be set to much more often and we will be preventing that short goalkeeper distribution. So that there is the team instructions. Now we can move over to the player roles and their instructions. So in goal, we're going to be using a sweeper keeper on the defensive G Duty, he has no added instructions but in central defense we will be using two ball playing defenders this actually helps a lot with the counter attacking moments but both of them will also have tackle harder on them again i said this in the previous video i just like my central defenders or my defenders to be aggressive when defending in football manager 2022 both full backs will be wing backs on the support of duty they will be getting further forward but also they will be sitting more narrow when we are in possession they're going to be tackling harder crossing from the bye line and aiming their crosses into the center because we will will be aiming for that central striker. In central midfield, one of the pivots will be a ball winning midfielder on the defensive duty, just so we can hold his position in front of the defence and his midfield partner will be a box to box midfielder. Someone can also join the attack when we're operating in the final third. The box to box midfielder will be fairly aggressive in possession, so he will be getting further forward, moving into the channels, dribbling more but also taking more risk with the ball. Now for our attack line, both wingers will be inverted wingers. They will also have identical instructions, which are marking tighter, sitting more narrow and also crossing aim into the center. So we will be marking tighter and sitting more narrow. This should help with the defensive shape, be more compact, but also with the mark tighter, I am trying to get them to track the opposition's fullback or wingback by marking tighter and not allowing them to receive the ball unintended or uncontested. And in attacking midfield, we do have an attacking midfielder under attacking duty. He's gonna be taking more risk, dribbling more, but also moving into the channels. And lastly, up top, we do have a pressing forward under attacking duty now. He doesn't necessarily hold up the ball as much as I would like, but I mean, that's something that we do have to compromise on Football Manager. But here, this is the tactic, the 4 2 3 1, all wrapped up. Jurgen Klopp's time at Borussia Dortmund. Now, if you do want to go more counter attacking, you will have to use the cautious mentality. But also, for the line of engagement, we have dropped this down by one notch and now it's on a standard line of engagement. So, when you are trying to play counter attacking, cautious mentality, drop the line of engagement down by one from higher to standard. But when you're trying to be the more dominant side, you would just shift the line of engagement to higher and the mentality to attacking. So now that there is the tactic wrapped up, we are going to get into the game, see how the tactic plays out. Hopefully we can smash whoever we're playing. I believe it's Hoffenheim at home, but let's get stuck into that game. So here we are and yes, we are playing Hoffenheim at home in the Bundesliga and when you do download a tactic, I believe I made a mistake. Now the mentality is uncautious when you download a tactic. It should be on attacking by default because you should be the dominant side more of the time. I mean, we will go for the attacking mentality. Maybe in the second half, we will try out cautious as well. But enough of that. Let's get stuck into the game. I'll just ask the assistant about the team talk. Match preview, let's get stuck in. Goalkeeper kicks it long and Kanji collects the ball. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna bring it forward? Yes, he is. Oh, go on, boy. There's Bellingham. Oh, he could have played it through to the winger there. But he's running wide with the ball. And we do have a, I mean, that's supposed to be a key highlight. Oh, no, we're on extended, sorry. My bad. Was gonna say that was a bit of a weird highlight, but we do have another highlight. Guerrero whips in the, about to say corner, but it was clearly a free kick. Here's Giovanni Reina now, dribbling with the ball. The centre back wins the ball to Haaland. Marco Royce oh, almost fell into this path, but he keeps the ball alive. Here's Guerrero now, puts the ball into the box. Daniel Marlin, he collects the ball. We're putting bodies inside the box. Jude Bellin, penalty! He brings down Jude Bellingham inside the box. It looks like it's going to be a penalty. He might go to the VAR. 
He's checking. He's checking. Penalty awarded. Haaland steps up now. Come on, smash this with your left foot, son. He's actually missed quite a few penalties for me, but he doesn't miss this one. Cool, collected, into the corner, and he sends the keeper the wrong way. What's his celebration? He done that against Wolfsburg, and the woman replied with her. <laughs> but it's 1-0 to Borussia Dortmund against Hoffenheim. Come on, boys. Inside the first 10 minutes, we have put some nice pressure on Hoffenheim. But Bauman, the goalkeeper, kicks it long to Krajmit, but we headed the ball. Here's Dahu, Jude Bellingham now, the box-to-box -box midfielder. The energizer. Duracell. Or is it Bunny? It doesn't matter. It's Guerrero on the ball down the left flank now. Here's Jude Bellingham again. He picks up the ball. Guerrero, he finds some space inside the box. Daniel Marlin. Clips his header over the bar. Unlucky boys. We shouldn't be putting the ball in the air to Daniel Marlin in the first place. That's what kind of happens. Poor header. <laughs> Here's Richards now on the ball for Hoffenheim. Scov. I don't know how to say his name or his name. But here's Rudy. Surely I can pronounce that name. He plays it out wide. I mean, Hoffenheim are enjoying some nice possession of the ball here. Hopefully our press wins the ball. Yes, we do. Here we go on the break now. Marco Royce, he finds Haaland. Come on, son. On your left. Should have used his right. Here's another attack. I mean, we're keeping the pressure on here. Here's Daniel Marlin out on the right wing. He runs wide with the ball. Instead of coming inside, but Erlen Harlan gets his seventh goal of the season. Off the bar. It's 2-0. Come on, boys. Marco Royce plays it to Bellingham. Here we're overloading one side of the pitch, and that allows us to switch play. He finds Daniel Marlin in space. He puts the ball into the box. Harlan on his right foot. I mean, he should have shot with his right foot the chance before. He clearly learned his lesson. That's that determination for ya. <laughs> Hoffenheim are playing some beautiful stuff, but we didn't see it. It's now Dortmund on the ball. Here's Jude Bellingham. Marco Royce, Giovanna Reyna. The Kanji, Reyna now. The Hood. Marlin, Rafael Guerrero. Just smash it. You got a left foot. But he puts the ball out wide. Jude Bellingham comes out wide as well. You will notice Jude Bellingham's movement always coming out. Oh, he's done it again. We've crossed the ball to Marlon's head and he's headed it over. But Bellingham's movement always drifting out wide. And that's a lot down to us focusing down the flanks. Because we're intensely focusing down those flanks, he is going to be drifting out in those wider areas to help the player on the ball. But they've almost gone. They've almost pulled one back. Good goalkeeping there by Cabell. So much of me talking there, we actually missed a chance. But luckily, it fell to Hoffenheim and not us. Here's another chance for... I mean, their marking looked awful there. But they did collect the ball. The goalkeeper collected the ball. He's going to kick it long and we're going to header it, surely. I mean, I've been playing this game way too many times. But here's Hoffenheim on the ball now. Krasmik. Dahoud. Good winning the ball there from the ball winning midfielder. He's He finds Haaland. Ah, oh, unlucky son. Harlan misses quite a few chances, doesn't he? I mean, he has scored two goals, but he's had about four or five chances. Just in general, on Football Manager, he does tend to miss a lot of chances. But he also gets a lot of chances. <laughs> Akanji on the ball now. He finds his centre-back partner. Dahoud, oh, what a ball. I found... Ah. I almost said I found that ball as well, but I saw that ball. <laughs> and he had the technique to find it. Wow, what a first half. That was a decent first half for Bruce Dortmund. We're going to tell the boys that we are happy, but we want to see even more. We're going to pump our fists. And now we can switch to counter-attack just to see how it's going to play out. Go to the dressing room. Let's start this second half. And you can see here as well with the average position, just how narrow our shape has been during this 90 minutes. Well, during the 60 minutes so far. And there hasn't been many highlights in the start of the second half. We can shout a little bit of an encouragement. Here's Guerrero now with the free kick. Oh, he denied a great goal. It looked like a decent save from the goalkeeper there. Hopefully we can get a clean sheet as well. Now that we've dropped the mentality down to cautious. We just want to see how the tactic operates in cautious mentality. And hopefully we also get that clean sheet. The shots at goal is still racking up. And Harlan heads the ball over and wide. Hoffenheim have barely had a chance in this game. They have had a clear cut and we did see that. But other than that, they haven't had much. And it looks like we're just going to kill the game out now with that cautious mentality. And there we are. We killed the game, a fairly professional performance. In the first half, we went attacking. You can see 
We scored two goals, but we put so much pressure in them in the first half. Second half, we dropped down to cautious and... I mean, we still put pressure on them, but it just wasn't as intense and it was fairly professional. We had more of the ball, though we're not a possession based side and you can see with the passes completed, it's only on 88%. We are playing more direct and that way you will tend to lose the ball more often. But well done to the lads. Now, let's look at the results and data after the season has finished. So welcome back to the results and data part of the video where we're just going to look at the results and look at the data hub fairly briefly. So in the Bundesliga, we were the champions. We played 34. I mean, we won 30. We drew two and we lost two. Those two losses coming away from home against Augsburg and Eintracht Frankfurt. And the two draws again came coming away from home against Butchum and Gladbach. In the Champions League, we got knocked out in a quarter final by Liverpool. I mean, this game is very very harsh at home we smashed them we beat them 3-1 and i just knew how the game would be once we went to anfield where we lost 4-0 i mean there's not really much we could do we tried to play counter attack and liverpool were just on form andrew robertson played a 10 there really wasn't much that we could have done about that in the dfb pocket we got knocked out in the quarter final by butcham that was fairly disappointing but we did play a heavy rotated side in the dfb pocket and in the super cup we got knocked out well we came runners up against Bayern Munich. So, in the cup competitions, we didn't do too well. In the Bundesliga, though, we done very well. So, we can look at some of the stats in the Bundesliga. The top goal scorers, I mean, it's us, of course. We scored 92 goals. We didn't have the most shots for. We come in second for the few shots against. Again, we come in second place. For the best pass completion, we aren't in the top eight, but we aren't a possession-based side. For the most possession, we do come in eighth with 50%. For the most tackles won, we're not in the top eight, but for the most dribbles made, we completed the most dribbles we had the most clean sheets and we had the fewest conceded for the top goal scorers i mean robert Lewandowski scored 46 goals in 32 games i wasn't sure how we could kind of compete with that but harlan did compete with that he had a similar minutes to goal ratio but harlan did only play 26 games and therefore he scored 33 goals looking at the most assists we have rafael guerrero in the list with 10 giovanni reyna with nine marco royce with eight for the most man of the match awards we have harlan in second place with nine felix pashlak is that how you pronounce his name with five i mean that's kind of a surprise there for the most key passes rafael guerrero with 119 most tackles won nobody in the top eight but for the most dribbles made daniel marlin just about makes the list with 73 most clean sheets it is our goalkeeper and for the fewest conceded again it is our goalkeeper now let's move over to the data hub looking at the attacking efficiency we had the highest conversion rate in the bundesliga with just over or in between 14 and 15 percent but Bayern munich had more shots per game than us which i mean it's no big deal looking at the defensive efficiency we can see that dortmund were very very good at keeping shots away from the goal just defending in general we had a quiet defense but we were also impenetrable looking at the tackles we attempted fewer tackles than average but we were strong in that area looking at the possession we frequently won the ball but we were also reliable i was kind of expecting us to be loose in possession but surprisingly we were reliable now looking at the squad stats top goal scorer in all competition harlan scored 42 in 35 daniel marlin scored 16 in 33 marco roy scored 10 in 28 giovanni reyna also scored 10 in 34 looking at the highest assists guerrero and giovanni reyna both on 12 julian brandt on nine as well as marco royce and we have jude bellingham on eight with felix pashlak and daniel marlin on six assists but unfortunately that wraps up this video i hope you guys have enjoyed it if you have enjoyed it make sure you subscribe make sure you like leave a comment the link to the tactic will be in the description link down below again the video that i made with zealand will also be in the description link below i'll see you guys soon stay safe and peace out